Hello, my name is Benjamin Hodgins. I am the Amazon FSX for OpenCFS Service Align Senior Solutions Architect. Amazon FSX for OpenZFS is a high performance, low latency managed NFS shared file service. FSX for OpenZFS provides high performance NAS-like capabilities not traditionally available in the cloud. On August 9th, 2023, a highly available high redundancy deployment option was released for FSX for OpenZFS, enabling customers with a new exciting option for high performance storage in the cloud. Today, we are going to deep dive into creating and configuring an FSX for OpenZFS file system covering how to get the most out of the performance configuration options, networking, security, backup, and maintenance. Before we begin, let's make sure we are creating resources in the desired region. In this case, I am using the US East or North Virginia region. Next, navigate to the FSX console and click Create File System. We are presented with the four FSX file system offerings. We can click each of them to see some of the options each service provides. Select FSX for OpenZFS and click Next. We are presented with a quick create option and a standard create option. For this demo, we're going to pick the standard create option. This provides us with additional configuration options at the time of creation. Please note that these options are available later on through the AWS console. First, enter a file system name. For this demo, we are going to create a multi-AZ or multi-availability zone deployment. With a multi-AZ deployment, all writes made to the file system are written synchronously to two complete file systems in different availability zones, and all reads come from the single active node. We are going to create a file system of 64 gigabytes. This is the minimum size that we can create. And for demo purposes, this is going to be sufficient. Let's say, for this use case, we're going to need a little bit more storage IOPS. By default, we provision three IOPS per gigabyte of storage. This is usually sufficient, but it's possible that you may need more for your use case. Here, we're going to increase the number just slightly. For instance, if I'm doing small IO workloads, I will need more IOPS for the same amount of storage. There's plenty of room to play here, and we can change this later on the console without interrupting the file system. For throughput, I'm going to increase from the default slightly as well to 640 megabytes per second. Note that even though FSX for OpenZFS is a network-based file system, these figures are in megabytes and not megabits. Now let's move on to networking. For networking, we'll first want to make sure that we're using the correct VPC for our project and then we will assign a security group. Please note that because this is an FSX for OpenCFS multi-AZ file system, we will need to pick a security group which allows port 2049 ingress to assure availability when the file system fails to the secondary AZ. Subnets are associated with specific availability zones. The primary concern to consider here is that you want to pick subnets associated with the EC2 instances which are going to consume the file system. In most cases, you will want to use the default endpoint IP address range, allocating an IP from the VPC. FSX for OpenZFS provides full disk encryption by default with no penalty to storage performance. We're going to use the default KMS key for the service for this demo, but you can also provide your own. Now let's look at the root volume configuration. For compression, we have LZ4, Z standard, or no compression as options. Compression on OpenZFS not only improves storage capacity, but also increases effective disk throughput and IOPS. 
for compression, we have LZ4, Z standard, and no compression as options. Compression on OpenZFS not only improves storage capacity, but also increases effective disk throughput and IOPS at no additional cost or penalty. Here, we will use LZ4, which provides a good balance between efficiency and capacity. NFS exports provide access to clients. We will leave the default, but we're also going to add an additional client. This creates an administrative host entry from the CIDR address. By default, root squash is enabled on NFS exports. The no root squash option, as I entered here, allows a host's root user full access to the file system. This can be useful while performing the initial population of your data. For backup and maintenance, we have several options. Backups are enabled by default and occur daily, but for our demo purposes, we're going to disable them. These settings can be changed later at any time. The weekly maintenance window is a 30 minute period during the week when service scheduled maintenance will occur if any patches are needed. We're going to pick a time which won't disrupt business operations. Finally, let's specify a tag for our file system. Tags are always best practice, and we can later use these tags to track assets in AWS budgets. I'm going to use an environment tag of testing for this non-productive file system. Click Next. Here we have an opportunity to review the options we've selected, paying particular attention to the attributes which are not editable after creation. When you are certain of the selected criteria, click Create File System. The file system creation will take a number of minutes. While we wait, let's recap. During this video, we reviewed the deployment options for Amazon FSx for OpenZFS, including the topics of performance, networking, security, and backup. I also demonstrated how easy and quick it is to provision high-performance storage on the cloud.